Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com where you're sure to learn the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today's part two of our dashboard designer uh, basics. Uh, first thing, last time we said uh, put all of your data in more of a different table format um, instead of on each individual tab. Now, uh, the next thing that we want to do is we want to insert some slicers. And you may ask, what are slicers? And slicers are essentially a filter. Uh, like if you've highlighted your table range uh, and you created a filter on it um, from your home ribbon, um, if you do something like that, it will have those little uh, boxes at the very top and, and filter your rows. Uh, so slicers are just a more visual representation of doing that. And they started in Excel 2010. So if you're in Excel 2003 or 2007, you do not have slicers. Uh, but let me show you how you go about making those. And then the neat thing about Excel 2013 is they've added slicers to tables. Um, so what we want to do first is we want to make this an Excel table. So I'm going to highlight my range by up here in A1. I'm going to do Control Shift right, and that gets me over to F1. I'm going to do Control Shift down. And now I'm all the way down to row 481. I'm going to go up to my insert ribbon. And right here it says table. You can also do Control T for this. I'm just going to go ahead and click on table and it's going to have that range that we have in there and it says my table has headers. Yes, it does. Date, group, category, rate, month, year. And we're going to go ahead and click on OK. So you can see those filters are now existing in our table, uh, but they're not as easy to use and not as visual because you can't tell if I uncheck 2014. You, really, you can tell that it's filtered, but you don't know what it's filtered on. So that's where slicers really help, uh, and it's going to help us with our ultimate finished dashboard. So let's go ahead and create the slicers now. What you want to do is go anywhere in your data table, go up to your um, insert ribbon, and then you'll see right here in the insert ribbon it says slicer. So you can do it from the insert ribbon, also from table tools on the design ribbon. Once I'm in the table, my, ta my contextual help or ribbon will show up and you can see there's an insert slicer there as well. Now if I click on insert slicer, you're going to now see what slicers do you want and these are essentially your columns of your table. So we're going to not do the date because those are two individual. We're going to do a group, which is fruit or vegetables. We're going to do the category, apples, bananas, grapes, pears. Uh, we're going to do the month and the year. Now month and year were calculated columns that we had on date so that we could just pick January of one year versus January of a following year. Let's go ahead and click on OK. And what you'll see is we now have four different slicers here that have been added to our table. Now these are going to work with pivot charts and um, help us create dynamic dashboards. So. Let's go ahead and check these out. So you can see this is more visual than the other filters that we've had. So if I click on fruit, my table is going to just show the fruit. And if I click on bananas, you can see I can drill down to the exact data that I want. So right now we're seeing fruit, bananas for February, fruit, bananas, February. Um, and then the years, all four of our years are showing up. Now, let's say you want a January, February, and March. You can click on January, hold your shift key down and click on March and it will add all three of those back into your data table. So it's essentially, you can see it's filtering right here. So that's all slicers really do. Um, but they're very visual that your users can then use um, in order to create dynamic dashboards. So if you want to do a non-contiguous range, let's say you want apples and you want oranges, you can click on apples, hold your control key down, click on oranges, and you can now see that we've got apples and oranges in our pivot table or our data table. In this case, we have not yet created a pivot table. We'll show you that in the next episode. Um, finally, if you want to clear these filters, you can click on clear um, up on the top right and the filters will go away and you'll be seeing all of the data from your data table. Uh, finally, if you right click on these, you'll notice um, there is, well, it's kind of off screen, so let me move it up here. If I right click on this, we do have some slicer settings, um, size and properties. We can change a few things related to these. Uh, number one, we can change the name on the slicer, like uh, pick a type of fruit or vegetable. Um, you can say, are we going to display a header or not? Oh, I'm sorry, there's the caption. Uh, this is just the name of the slicer itself. You can have, are we going to do it ascending or descending? Um, you can use custom lists when sorted, uh, hide items, data with no value. 
uh, visually indicate items with no data um, and uh, show items with no data last. So uh, you can see there's lots of different settings that you can do on your slicers. And um, if you end up hitting your delete key and getting rid of a slicer accidentally, you can go back into your table, go back to your insert ribbon, click on slicer, and we can add group again, and it should be back. So let's see and make sure that works. So I can click on fruit, and then you'll notice my category is now uh, changed, so we can do grapes. So in case you get rid of a slicer, you can add them back as well. Hopefully this helps you uh, figure out how to create uh, slicers in Microsoft Excel. Remember, these are 2013 uh, for tables, 2000 and uh, 10 um, are for pivot charts only. So uh, hopefully that gives you an incentive maybe to get to Excel 2013. And in the next episode, we'll show you more about pivot tables for your dynamic dashboards. Once again, uh, visit my blog at exceldashboardtemplates.com where you're sure to get other great posts like this. Also, consider subscribing to my video channel so that you're sure to get the next post delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.